It's J.P. Morosi on the inside corner. The doctor in your house, my friend, is your better half. But we have been collectively worried about Mike Trout and his back issues. He said it was overblown. Imagine Twitter uh, overblowing <laughs> or exaggerating anything. He says he's going to have to manage it for the rest of his career. But he's going to be back this year and the rest. Any updates? Yes, Lauren, and good morning. It's a really important story, obviously, for us to have some context on because obviously he's he's the face of the game in so many ways, Mike Trout. Uh, but we know this, as you point out, a really thorough story by Robert Falkoff at MLB.com yesterday describing where the Angels are with this. And I want to read a quote from the Angels head athletic trainer, Mike Frostad. Quote, I think we have to have some concern on the situation. I'm paraphrasing that part. Quote, He's a little more upbeat today and starting to feel like he's getting the benefits of the treatment. But long term, we do have to look at this as something he has to manage, not just through the rest of this season, but also through the rest of his career, probably. Now, that's been generally described as a back slash rib cage issue, but it's now a costal vertebral dysfunction at the T5 vertebrae. Again, it's very technical, Lauren, but I think that the key part of this is according to the athletic training staff of the Angels, this is something that, yes, he can play through, but it's important to manage. And obviously, he is a key part of the Angels' future, a key part of the game's future. Trout himself, as you point out, has, has certainly expressed a lot of confidence that he is going to be back. But again, I think that the key thing is that the Angels probably going forward, whether it's treatment day to day, whether it has to be some, some days off going forward to make sure that he's feeling good about himself, this is probably not the last time we talk about this issue for Mike Trout, but the key thing is it can be managed and he can continue to play. I would think a lot of players have to manage certain health issues throughout their career. He will stay on top of his routine, we have no doubt. The White Sox, JP, have been really impossible to figure out. I think we can all agree they've underachieved, but the talent is off the charts. Where does that leave them with a couple days before the deadline? You know, Lauren, it's a great question. This, this to me, I agree. This has been the most vexing team in the major leagues for me this season, the Chicago White Sox, because I had such high hopes for them in spring training. Sure. But they've been so inconsistent, basically within a game or two of 500 for a long time, never quite able to break through. And now people are asking, okay, is Lucas Giolito out there and available? Is Lance Lynn out there and available uh, with the deadline What'd coming up on August the wow. 2nd? I was told just this morning the answer to both questions is no. The White Sox are not going to trade Giolito or Lynn before the deadline on Tuesday. And the reality is, Lauren, they are 14 and 10 in the month of July. So at least the last month or so has been more encouraging. And in the division, there are three games out. When you have a Hall of Fame manager in the dugout who you brought back into this capacity to win, and you have a win now roster, and you're three games out of a division, that is winnable. And certainly, Minnesota and Cleveland have both played well this year, but there are some vulnerabilities there. To me, Lauren, it's really hard to turn around and sell right now when you've played better in July. If they had had a calamitous month of July, it'd be a different story, but they haven't. They're right in this thing, and so Giolito and Lynn stay in Chicago past Tuesday. Calam what was that word you just used? You <laughs> Harvard graduate? Calamitous. Uh, I don't know what that a means. Calamity. Uh, okay. Disastrous, I guess would be, would be a better way to say it. <laughs> you said Lance Lynn and Giolito, and I froze. So interesting, JP, because we're talking trade candidates, pitchers, and I mean, when we talk about it, it's a list of three. It's Castillo, and it's Montas, and it's Pablo. There have to be more. Lauren, I think Martin Perez, for me, is, is one of the key rental starting pitchers out there. Now, I know Texas will have interest in him long term and maybe bring him back. But this, because of his relationship with Texas, of course, he's left and returned before. I think they could trade him in the next few days, re-sign him in the offseason. I see no reason why, given the, the state of the relationship, why that couldn't happen. And you see the strength and consistency of the numbers that he has put up. The innings total for me that you see on the, on the screen there is really encouraging. It's up above 100 innings pitch. I consider the way that he is, he is pitching right now as a lefty, I look at Minnesota. We talked about how Chicago's probably still in, a, in at least a, a hold, maybe a buying posture. I think Minnesota needs to strengthen their rotation. And I love the fit for Perez with the Toronto Blue Jays because they've had Ryu be injured. Kikuchi's been inconsistent. They need, I think, at least one more left-handed starter to help them through the American League East in the second half. I really think among all the possibilities, the Toronto Blue Jays are probably the best fit of all wow. for Martin Perez, who pitches 
today in front of, I'm sure, Lauren, a lot of scouts in Anaheim. I see you in your predictions. Next week is the week. Can you stand it? Sleep now. Caffeinate. JP Morosi on the Inside Corner. Thanks so much. Happy Friday. Thanks, Lauren. Have a great weekend. See you next week.